series ended. Quite a shock for Sri Lanka. They were totally beaten up in all front and not being able to win a single game. Practice match was abandoned and the first test was ended up with a draw. Second one day game went into the wire, but they lost all other games easily. So, at the end of the series, Pakistan won the test series by 2-0, and one day series by 4-0. Now let's see the one day records. Pakistan's highest score was 231 for 5 at Lahore and 3 times they went past 200 runs mark. They were not let themselves all out in all 4 games. And at Hyderabad they lost 7 wickets but able to safeguard the tail. Undoubtedly, skipper Javed Mayandad was the batting star. With 250s he scored 165 runs with an healthy average of 82.50 and an aggressive strike rate of 109.27. Ram is with 150 standing next. He short 12 runs than Mayandad. Two other middle order batsmen Zahir and Malik went past 100 runs mark. Two openers, Mudassar and Shoab had to stick in 90s. Mayandad, Ramaz, and Shoab went past more than 10 boundaries. Only two success from Pakistan camp, that went to Malik and Qadir. Also, notable thing is four Pakistan batters, Ali, Kamal. Ahmed and Zahir were not got an opportunity to bat. Bowling records for Pakistan team. As you can see, wickets divided among the bowlers. Three bowlers in top with six wickets each. They are Qadir who is at the top followed by Mudassar and Naktesh. Pakistan legend Imran played only three games and he grabbed four wickets and listed as the fourth in the list. Mohsin in his two games grabbed three wickets. Zahir Abbas, who played his last international game grabbed two wickets. Tazif and Zahir took one each. No joy for part-timers Shoaib and Salim in wickets column. Pakistan managed to score six fifties in the series. Skipper Mayandad was leading from front and he scored two fifties and kept the position number one and six to his name. 91 not out at Lahore was his highest score. Shahib shored 72 not out in the first game and Malik scored another dashing 72 not out at Gujaranwala. Zahir Abbas scored his last one day international 50 at Gujaranwala and gave a good support to Malik. 56 at Lahore was Ramiz Raja's first ever one day 50. Tahir Naktashi's 3 for 59 was the best performance in an innings for Pakistan. None of the other bowler able to go beyond 3 wickets mark other than him. But they had 10 spells of 2 wickets each. Both Qadir and Mudassar had 2 wickets spells in 3 games each. Imran's figure of 2 for 22 was the third best in the list. Zahir Khan and Mohsin Kamal took 2 for 26 in Hyderabad together. Naktash again took 2 wickets at Piwar. As a wicket keeper of 3 games, Salim Youssef takes the lead in this list. He took 4 dismissals of the series including 3 catches and a stumping. Ashraf Ali played only the first game and he took just one catch behind the wicket. Again, Tahir Naktash at the top of a list. This time for fielding. He took 3 catches and ranked first in his 4 games. Malik took 2 catches. Rest of the fielders, Mohsin, Kamal, Imran, Javed, and Zahir took just one catch each during the series. When it comes to the partnerships Pakistan made two century stands, for the first wicket and the fifth wicket. In the first game Mudassar and Shoaib put 113 for the first wicket and next game Zahir and Salim put dashing 116 for the fifth wicket. Javed Mayandad involves in four top partnerships whereas Mudassar, Ramaz, Zahir, and Qadir involves in two each. Overall Pakistan made two century stands and 350 stands during the tour. No partnerships for 9th and 10th wickets, because Pakistan tail was never exposed. Now let's see Sri Lanka story in one day games. They managed to score beyond 200 run mark twice and highest score was the 228 for 7 at Lahore game. Also, they bowled out below 150 in the first and the last game. Not much joy for Sri Lankan batsmen during the series. Well, only two players able to go just beyond 100 runs mark. Aravinda, thanks to his 86, able to be the highest run getter, even though he got two ducks. He ended up the series by scoring 105 runs. Skipper Duliap with no 50 standing second with exactly 100 runs. Runjun took 73 in one game, but in the series, he scored only 89 runs standing next. Four other players able to score above 50 runs. Guru Sinha and Ahangama yet to open their accounts. During the series entire Pakistan camp hit just two sixers. But Arinda hit five alone and Ranjan hit four, followed by Ramesh and Asantha one each. 
when it comes to bowling just one bowler able to grab six wickets during the series. Remind you that Pakistan had three such kind. Ramesh was the top of the Sri Lankan list. With four wickets with his spin, Roger YG's Uriya holding the second position. With three wickets each, Ravi and Asantha standing next two positions. Arjuna and Vino then are the only two remaining bowlers with wickets. In his only game with just three overs, Salia left wicketless. Sri Lanka managed to score only two fifties in this four match series. Aravinda's 86 was the highest in the list. Aravinda's innings was the fourth best ever innings in Sri Lankan one day international saga after Roy Dias and Sidath Wedamuni. And this was his highest ever passing his previous best of 81 not out. Runjun Madugala scored another 50 and he contributed with 73 into the list. That was his highest score too. That was Sri Lanka's 13th best score. None were able to score a 50 and the third highest in the series belongs to Duliap for his innings of 46. Dias and Arjuna secure the positions number 4 and 5 respectively. Two Sri Lankan bowlers took three wickets each in an innings. Ravi Ratnayak took three for 34 at Hyderabad in mark as the best performance among both teams. Also Ramesh took 3 for 51 at Gujranwala and 2 for 50 at Lahore. Also Roger Wijisuriya took 2 for 25. None of these figures impact the top Sri Lankan performances till that date. Ravi's performance was listed as the number 13 of the list. Behind the wicket job was done by Amal in three occasions. He took two catches in those three games. But all these two catches came in one game. Debutanis and Kaguru Sinha played single game and took one catch. They both not being able to take a stumping chance in the series. Ashantha grabbed two beautiful outfield catches in one game and that performance lift his as the highest catching fielder position in Sri Lanka lineup. Aravinda, Ranjan, Dilip, and Roger took one catch each in their four games and listed after Ashantha. Not much impressive batting partnership for Sri Lankan team. They were not being able to score a single 100 runs partnership. In fact, they passed 50 runs stand only three times. Twice they put 90 plus scores for the third wicket and once they put for the opening stand Duliap involved in best partnerships in four occasions. Amal, Aravinda, Roy, Arjuna, Ashantha, Ramesh, and Roger involves twice each. Other than them Ranjan and Vino then involved one time each. 96 runs stand for the third wicket is the new record for Sri Lanka in all time list. Previous best was belongs to Anura Tanakun and Michael Tisira. They both build 82 runs for the third wicket against Australia in 1975 at famous oval game. Now let's see few pages on test records. Firstly, Pakistan side. Highest test total in the series, and the only occasion a team went beyond 500 runs mark was the face Alabad test. Pakistan was able to score 555 for 3 in their innings. Which was their 12th best test total ever. Still their best total is 674 for 6 which they made against India in the same venue in 1984. Face Alabad was a blessing ground for highest scoring game for Pakistan and they have passed 500 runs milestone 5 times in this ground so far. Also this is Pakistan's highest score against Sri Lanka and the previous best was 500 for 7 which they scored at Lahore in 1982. Two low scores listed at the bottom were the second innings totals which they put on the scoreboard to reach targets in last two games. Just like in one day series, Pakistan skipper Javed Mayandad leading from batting front in test as well. In three games he played just three innings and scored 306 with a mighty double century and a 50. With 350s Pakistan all-rounding opening batsman Mudassar stand next by scoring 253. Qasim Umar hit one beautiful double hundred. But he was not being able to carry out his form to next two games. So he ended up by scoring 218 in the entire series. Mohsin Khan was the only other player went past 100 runs mark. Imran with 150 standing is the rank 5. Wicket keeper Salim Youssef not played a single 50 but he stands next Imran and Ramaz with a fine 50 in his only innings standing next. Pakistan legendary batsman Zahir Abbas played his last test but it was a bitter test series for him. In two games he played just four runs in one innings. Ashraf Ali and Jalal Uddin not got opportunity to bat. As usual wicket column dictates by Pakistan legend Imran Khan. He took 17 in the series, reminding his performance in 1982 against Sri Lanka. In that series Imran played just one game but he took 14 wickets. Qadir took 9 wickets with his magical leg spin and Wasim, played only the test series and took 8 wickets. 
Taz Eve played only the last game, he given the justification for his selection by grabbing 6 wickets including 1-5-4. Mudassar and Mohsen played their part by taking 4 wickets each. Only remaining wicket lies in Jalal Uddin's pocket. Pakistan batting list looks strong with 2 double centuries. Qasim Umar was at top with 206. That is the highest against Sri Lanka in a test match so far and the first double hundred against them. Previous highest belongs to New Zealand batsman John Reid for his 180 at Colombo in 1984. Also he passes previous best by Pakistan batsman against Sri Lanka. That record belongs to Haroon Rashid previously in 1982 series. Second double ton also scored in this series. That is Javed Mayandad's 203 not out. None other Pakistan batsmen able to score a century but they scored 750s. Mudassar had a good series and he scored 350s in all three games. Another notable performance is Ramiz Raja scored his first ever test 50. Imran's 5 for 40 was the best in the list. This figure is the overall 9 best bowling in a test innings versus Sri Lanka. Imran holding the best ever so far. He took 8 for 58 in 1982 series. Addition to Imran, two spinners Qadir and Tazif took two 5 wickets hauls. Their two spells stand 10th and 11th positions respectively. This is the second occurrence three 5 wicket hauls taken against Sri Lanka. First was the Pakistan tour of 1982, where Imran took two 5 for and Iqbal Qasim took one. In addition to his 5-4, Imran took one 4 wickets spell and two 3 wickets spells. Undoubtedly, Salim Youssef won this title by miles. In his two games he grabs 12 dismissals. 12 catches and one stump. In one innings he took 5 dismissals, he took all 5 wickets as catches. A Pakistan keeper has done this for the first time in the decade. Overall, this is the fourth time Pakistani keeper has done so. Wasim Bari with his 7 catches against New Zealand in 1979 holding the world record. Previously, Salim Youssef's best was 4 catches against Sri Lanka in 1982. Ashraf Ali took 3 dismissals. Just like in the batting cards, Javed Mayandad and Qasim Umar having the top positions in fielding list, they both took 3 catches each. Shoaib Mohamed took 2 in his only game and Malik took 2. Qadir, Mudassar and Akram took 1 each. Pakistan managed to score just 100 runs stand during the series. But they were able to extend it beyond 300 marks and finally just short 3 runs to hit 400 runs mark. Both Qasim Umar and Javed Mayandad hit double centuries during this stand Pakistan owning the world record stand for the third wicket as well. Mayandad and Mudassar put Mammoth 451 against India in 1983 was the record. Overall, this is Pakistan's third 300 plus stand Javed Mayandad appears in three partnerships. Mudassar, Umar, Ramiz, and Imran appear twice each. Salim Youssef was all over the tail. He built partnerships in last four wickets. Now let's see Sri Lanka's test records during the tour. In the first game they managed to score a mammoth 479. This is the second largest total for Sri Lanka till date and best against Pakistan. In 1982 team Sri Lanka managed to score 454 in the same venue against same opponent. Two years later, that is in 1984 summer they break that record at Lords and achieve their best ever total against England. They not being able to maintain the same momentum in other games and managed to score two 200 plus scores and just above 150 runs mark. Just like in one day games, a Ravinda leading the batting table in test as well. In the three games he scored 250 runs with series average of 50 runs including two centuries. None of the batsmen were able to go beyond 200 marks. Three other went past 100 runs mark, they were Arjuna, Saidath, and Ramesh. Ravi with 90 runs able to climb up beyond regular Sri Lankan batsmen. Roy, Ranjan, Dulyab, and Amal scored beyond 50 runs. Debutant Guru Sinha scored 29 in his only game. Just like Pakistan, only one bowler passed the 10 wicket mark. That was Ravi Ratnayak who finished the series with 10 wickets. Other two seamer Sashantha and Ramesh took 7 and 6 wickets respectively. As a spinner Roger took only one wicket during the whole series. In summary, it was not a good series for Sri Lankan bowlers. In three games they grab only 24 wickets out of 60. Arjuna, Ranjan, and Aravinda did some part-time bowling duty time to time, but went wicketless. Young Aravinda made two centuries during this tour. In the first game he managed to score 122, 
which is ranked as the fourth highest test innings by a batsman till date. Also that was his maiden test 100 and his previous best was 75 against India at Colombo this year. Before this tour Sri Lanka managed to score 13 centuries in Aravinda's 2 century listed as 14th and 15th centuries for Sri Lanka. After this series Aravinda joined Sri Lankan century club consists of, Sidath, Dulyab, Arjuna, Amal, Roy and Ranjan. Even from this list other than Arjuna and Ranjan, rest of the folks hit more than a century, Aravinda able to reserve a seat in the elite club as well. Other than Aravinda's performance Sri Lanka scored 450s. This is one of the titles Sri Lanka having advantage over Pakistan. Ravi's 8 wickets spell at Sialkot was the best performance between both teams. Still the best overall performance between these two nations lies with Imran. Not only Ravi, even their opening bowler Ashantha grabbed 6 wickets in the final game. Ravi's performance was the best Sri Lankan bowling performance in test till date and he overtook previous record of 6 for 85 of Ramesh who perform in the last Indian series. So, with 6 wickets in his hand, Demel secure 3rd position in the list. Notable thing is top 3 overall performance were done in this year during back to back series. Other than those magical performances, Ramesh was able to grab 2 wicket each in all 3 games. With 4 dismissals in 2 games behind the wicket Amal Silva was leading from the wicket keeping front. In 1 game he took 3 catches, which is the highest in the series from Sri Lanka camp. In his debut game Asunka took 2 catches. Just like in 1 day series no stumping dismissals for Sri Lankan wicket keepers. Not much joy in the field for Sri Lanka. They took only 6 catches in whole series. Young Arjuna leading the front with two catches. Rest of the fielders, Ashantha, Ramesh, Saidath, and Roger took one catch each. Compared to one day series, Sri Lanka managed to build decent partnerships in test games. For the sixth wicket they built 100 runs stand in for the wickets of second, third, seventh, and ninth they put up 50 runs stands. Altogether they built a century stand in for 50 stands. The partnership of 52 for the ninth wicket between Ramesh Rathnagka and Aravinda da Silva was a new Sri Lankan record. Previous best was 42 between Ashantha Damel and Ravi Rathnayaka Chennai against India in 1982. Aravinda involved in five best partnerships in the list followed by Arjuna in three and Sidath, Amal, and Ramesh in two. Rest of the batsmen, Ranjan, Roy, Tulyab, Ravi, Ashantha, and Roger appears in one occasion each. Face Alibad innings was the blessing for Sri Lanka, they built seven partnerships at that venue, series ended and organizers pick it two man of the series instead of one from both sides. Due to his superb performance in both the format, Sri Lankan youngster Aravinda da Silva was adjudicated as joint man of the match. In one day series he scored 105 runs with a 50 and in test including two superb knocks of hundreds he scored 250 runs. Also he bowled five overs for 22 runs. From Pakistan's side, undoubtedly, it was their skipper Mayandad, who leads from the front. In test with a double hundred and a fifty he scored 306 runs and in one day series with two fifties he scored 165 runs. There are some retirements from one day arena from Pakistan camp. Pakistan all-rounder Tahir Naktash was never called to the side after. He played his first game against West Indies at Lahore in 1980 and fourth one day match at Hyderabad was his 40th and the last game. With the bat with one half century, he scored 210 runs, and with the ball he grabs 34 wickets. First game at Peshawar was Pakistan keeper Ashraf Ali's last game. He too made a one-day debut in West Indies tour to Pakistan in 1980. In these five years he played 16 games and scored 69 runs. Behind the wicket he took 20 dismissals, including 17 catches and 3 stumps. Moving too far across towards the offside, weight going towards the off, the ball towards leg, a thin edge, a thin deflection, and there uh, taking the ball with Ashraf. So that's the end of Richards, a tremendous blow for Pakistan, two for 19 the score. Shout, big shout, he's out, yes, caught down the leg side, my word there in this match to his breaks. Three for 38. A bad kick it all round. Not a good ball from Tar here, but it just goes to show that not always the good ball gets the good wicket. And Desmond Haynes, a shot that he would certainly not be impressed with. Short one down leg side, bad delivery, but equally bad shot, just clipping the glove. 
And Ashraf getting across and a jubilant Ashraf. So Desmond Haynes out for seven, three for 38 the West Indies. Also, Pakistan legend Zahir Abbas announced his retirement as well. This stylish right-hand batsman made his one-day appearance in 1974 against England at Nottingham. In his 11 years span in one-day arena he scored 2,572 runs with 7 centuries and 13 fifties. Including his highest score of 123 in 1982 series, he scored 473 runs. He scored three more fifties, in addition to that century. Also he took seven wickets with his off-break. His best bowling performance of 2 for 26, which he took in his last game. In the field he took 16 catches. Zahir captained the national side for 13 games. Rodney Marsh just acknowledging his century of 101 balls in only 130 minutes. Even from Sri Lankan camp there were three retirements. Salia Ahangama, Amal Silva, and Roger YG's Uriya were never called into playing 11s in one-day games. So this is their last one-day series. Salia Ahangama was unfortunate. He played just one game and even that match he bowled only three overs. He was hammered for 23 runs and not got a second chance to come back. He was replaced in the next game and injuries not let him to join to the side ever again. He showcases a new hope as a bowler by grabbing 18 wickets in his maiden test series against India in 1985. But lack of games seals his feet and he was one of the unfortunate players in Sri Lankan cricket saga. Slow left arm bowler, Roger YG's Uriya, two never called to the side again. So, the last and fourth game was technically his last game. He wears Sri Lankan cricketing hat in one day games in 1982 against Pakistan. In his short tenure he played eight games and grabbed eight wickets. Unfortunately, his best performance of two for 25 came in his last game at Hyderabad. After playing 20 games, Sri Lankan opening batsman and wicketkeeper, Amal Silva had to step down from one day international stage. As a keeper he took 20 dismissals, including 17 catches and 3 stumps. Including 3 fifties, he scored solid 441 runs as a batsman. All his fifties came in the Benson and Hedges series in 1985 at Australia. In one game in front of West Indies paceman, he scored brilliant 85. That too in a bouncy pitch. Amal was a great resource during early days of Sri Lankan cricket history. Even there are good buys in test pitch as well. First ever one day hat trick taker Jalal Uddin was one. Technically, he was away from first class cricket when he calls upon for the first test against Sri Lanka. His average performance not let him to play for Pakistan again. He played his first game against Australia in 1982. During his short test span, he played six games and got 11 wickets. Second test was the goodbye game for Pakistan legend Zahir Abbas in front of his home crowd. This fine batsman played 78 test games starting from 1969 against New Zealand. During his 17 years play he scored 5,062 runs including 12 centuries and 20 fifties. He already passed 5,000 test runs milestone and standing as the 24th highest test run getter till the date. He got 1,000 plus test runs against three nations, India, Australia, and England. His Birmingham innings of 274 was a one of the greatest innings in test history. In addition to that he scored another three double hundreds. He grabbed 34 catches and three wickets. Sahaf volley struck beautifully through the offside for four runs. Derek Underwood's given chase, but no chance at all. So Ken Shuttleworth of Lancashire coming in again. And that's delicately clipped away down to long leg. Four more runs to Zahir. Perfectly placed, beautifully timed. The far end with the breeze. And that's four runs, high up in the air, over to the mid-wicket boundary. From Rayleigh was first loosener, and 200 he's got. And here they come, the Pakistani supporters, rushing on to congratulate him. What a marvellous moment this is for this big young boy. That's 250 then to Zahir. Looked away on the lake side for two runs, moving on to 251. 
What a glorious stroke through the covers off the back foot. Zahir was finally out for 274, caught by Luckhurst off Illingworth. Pakistan declaring at 608 for seven. But despite following on, England managed to draw the match. Just like one day games, Roger YG's Uriya had to step out from test games as well. After the series, he played as a extra player in couple of matches, but never got an opportunity to play in the middle. So last test at Karachi was his last game. He was not that much success in test, played 4 games and grabbed just a wicket. That too in his last game. Abdul Qadir was his only test victim. He was able to play test only against Pakistan, that is his debut game in Lahore, 1982 and all 3 games against them again in 1985. That conclude the series. Sri Lanka were totally knocked out. They lost one day series by 4-0 and test series 2-0. Before the series they able to beat world champion India but still they not mature enough to maintain their rhythm outside their soil. It was okay. Batting displays of Aravinda and Arjuna, bowling display of Ravi gave some good signs. Still they have passed 3 days after earning their test status. Still Lions young, they can hope for a bright future once their youngsters got matured.